have this meeting to order. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. posted 72 hours prior to each meeting at the following locations. City Hall, the Crowell Public Library, and the Recreation Department. The agenda is also posted on the city's website. The city welcomes public input. Members of the public may address the city council by completing a public comment code and giving it to the city clerk prior to the meeting. At this time, the public may address to the city, the city council on items that are not on the agenda. Pursuant to the law, the city council may not discuss or take action on issues not on the meeting agenda. Government Code Section 54954.2. The mayor reserves the right to place limits on duration on anyone of comments. Staff may be asked to follow up on such items. Is there anyone wishing to speak at this time? Yes. Mr. John Dustin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem and I just wanted to, I apologize, I was rushed out of the house, I forgot my visual aids, but uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, unsolicited written materials being distributed in the city. Um, I noticed once again, I got my copy of the Pasadena Magazine delivered to my driveway, which I promptly collected and uh, flipped through and deposited in the trash. Um, but I noticed when I go on my walks around town, a lot of people are not as diligent. Um, I've got people on my walk that they still have last month's passing the magazine sitting at the end of their driveway, uh, along with the little rolled up circulars from the LA Times. Um, and they just sit there. People will walk down to their driveway and pick up their newspaper and leave the flyers. And they sit there for weeks and weeks and weeks until they're pounded by traffic and rain and sprinklers. Um, and it's my understanding that that is a violation of our ordinance um, and I'm wondering does the city have a plan to contact the publishers who leave those materials so, I mean with the magazine it'd be pretty easy to identify that person um, the rolled up leaflet from the LA Times I'm assuming it's the LA Times because they're the most prominent piece of material in there but uh, uh, anyway I'm just would encourage the city to look into that um, because our citizens don't seem to be picking them up quite regularly and it looks very unsightly that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. City Manager's Report. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I have no report this evening. Do I have any motion to waive for the readings? Uh, so moved. I'll second. Motion passed. All in favor, motion. Say aye. Aye. Uh, any approves? Opposed? None. Motion passed. of certificate to, to Victor Chapel Mayor for the day. Good job. Thank you. I want to thank our Mayor Todd and his parents for their generous donation to our schools. I, I've got some questions for uh, 
<laughs> Mayor Tao. Uh, what school do you go to? Valentine Elementary School. And what grade are you in? Fifth and who's your teacher? Mrs. Roderman. What's your favorite subject? Math. Wow. wow. All right. Well, that's exciting. What do you want to do when you grow up? Uh, be a paleontologist. <laughs> we were hoping you'd say councilman. <laughs> the kid does math, he knows better. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. You did a great job. Okay, let's get a photo. placement of Seaman Carly's name on War Memorial. Director Brown, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. This past July, it came to our attention, courtesy of Mitch Lehman of the San Marino Tribune, that a sailor who had perished at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, had been identified as a former San Marino resident. As indicated in the staff report, Seaman First Class John Albert Carley was born on the Huntington Estate in 1922, and right after his 18th birthday in 1940, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He was serving on the battleship USS Oklahoma on December, on December 7th. As part of the work to include Seaman Carley on the War Memorial Wall, the Public Works Department was asked to research if there were any World War I service members from San Marino who could also be included. To date, our researchers have not found any such veteran and in case ones are found in the future, we have procured two additional blank and matching tablets just in case. In the meantime, the department uh, had one of the stone tablets re-engraved to include Seaman Carly's name and it was installed last Friday in time for Veterans Day. Joining us tonight is Mrs. Marilyn Long, Seaman Carly's niece, uh, should the mayor and council uh, like to recognize her and her uncle. To properly conclude this work, uh, we will need a budget appropriation to pay for it, uh, funding of which is available in the War Memorial Donations account. I would like to thank uh, Ms. Judith Carter of the Historical Society for her research into San Marino World War I veterans, and the department's administrative analyst, Ms. Ruiz, who made this project happen in short order. This concludes staff report. Thank you. Um, questions? Yes. 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 Uh, I have none, but I, I would love to hear from the niece uh, one, one more time. I heard her uh, Thursday at Rotary. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I brought a picture of my uncle. Uh, this is John Alfred Carly. I don't know the exact date of the photo. But it's obviously he was in Hawaii at the time. Um, he was nine, just uh, slightly over 19 years old when he went down with the Oklahoma. And as I said, uh, his, um, my sister and I gave DNA samples uh, to this identification process six and a half years prior to him being identified. It took that long. 50% uh, of the um, 
about 50% of the 429 that perished aboard the Oklahoma have now been identified, and um, other families are waiting, but it's wonderful closure for us. His family lived on the estate from 1921 until 1930. His father worked in the greenhouses for the Huntingtons. Thank you for <coughs> honor. Thank you very much. you spoke, um, I believe, at Memorial Day, was that yes. correct? And, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so I wanted to thank you for bringing that to our attention because I think that's so important and I appreciate your effort and the time it took on your family's behalf to get this to happen initially because that's a very important um, work that's being done and interesting when you think of the DNA connection. So thank you for doing that and being part of that process. Thank you, City of San Diego. We appreciate it. And I'm going to open this to public. Any public comments? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of uh, comments. I have a motion to make. Uh, I move to receive and file the October update on the progress of the inclusion of U.S. Navy Seaman First Class John Albert Carley on the Lacey Park War Memorial and the progress of identifying World War I veterans and appropriate $3,000 from the donations fund unappropriated fund balance into account number 281-50-4206-9400 Building Repair and Maintenance War Memorial. Second. Um, all those in favor say aye. Oh, boy, hold on. Roll call, please. Councilmember Jacobowski? <clears throat> yes. Councilmember Tall? Yes. Councilmember Yudi? Yes. Vice Mayor Shepard Romney? Yes. Mayor Huang? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, and I hope that we don't put any more names on that memorial. Okay, now uh, we move to item number three, appointment to the Board of Trustees of the Greater Los Angeles County Veteran Control, uh, Control District. Uh, yes, good evening, Mayor and uh, Council Members. Uh, the item that is being presented before you tonight is the appointment of um, uh, <coughs> The appointment to the Board of Trustees of the Greater Los Angeles County Vector Control District. Uh, the Board notified uh, the City Clerk's Office that the appointment for uh, Scott Palm was expiring as of January 6th of uh, 2020. And we, were, we are required to uh, make an appointment uh, by that date. I have uh, been in contact with Scott Kwong, he is interested in being appointed for uh, an additional two years. Um, so uh, uh, the appointment at, for January 6, 2020 um, would be a two-year term, which would end, um, oh, I'm sorry, January, January 3rd, 2022. So with that, that's all I have to present. The staff recommendation is that you approve and appoint uh, Scott Kwong. Question? Yes, please. We appreciate um, Scott taking on this duty and his timely report. He's done a great job. Okay, now I'm going to open this to the public. Other comments? Seeing none. Any more comments? Do we have a motion? I move to reappoint Mr. Scott Kwong to serve on the Board of Trustees for the Greater Los Angeles Vector Control District for a two-year term ending January 3, 2022. Any second? All second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passed. Now let's go to the same calendar. Is there anything? Mm -hmm. Item number 12. Item number 12. Else. I want to pull number five. So, do I have a motion for items four through um, 11 except five? So move. Um, any second? I'll second. Um, roll, um, roll call. Roll call, please. Council Member Jacob Yes. Council Member Tall? Yes. 
Councilmember Yudi? Yes. Vice Mayor Trevor Roney? Yes. Mayor Huang? Uh, yes. Um, motion passed. Now let's go to item five. First. I, yes, uh, first of all, I, I, I do appreciate uh, the greater explanation that occurs and the notes that are provided, but I do have a question on page 157 of the report. Um, we talk about the increase of uh, administration, and you point out 5A, and in 5A, give an explanation for about 54000 of the $68,000 in, in, in change over the previous year. And it's if you're going to explain it, explain it all, because otherwise it, it, it creates a suspicion. Um, do we know what has happened to the other approximately $14,000 that is an increase over the previous year? Or is this something you might have to report back on? You're talking, just to be clear, you're talking about Note 5A? Note 5A. You say the increase the increase was 68000 is, and it's due for three reasons. Legal services is 24. Um, oh, I see. You're saying there's 14000 left unaccounted for. There, in that there you have 17000 in legal expenses. And then salary-related expenses of thirteen thousand. That, unless my math is wrong, does not add equal to sixty-eight thousand. It adds up to fifty-four thousand. So what I'd like to know is what was the other fourteen thousand? Is it just general increase in costs? Is there a specific expense item that didn't get related in the note? Um, but when we have it, you did it in the previous month. You did it in a lot of these, but. When this gets left unexplained, it creates anxiety and it makes me more difficult for me to sleep at night. We don't want to. Yeah. We'll go back and look at the notes and figure out what the rest of the increase was. I would just say um, thank you for bearing with us for the last year, as you know, with our operating as interim finance director. We've been short staffed in that department. So I appreciate all the work that the department's been doing as clearly as a whole. We will find out what that 14000 is and we can be able to work on that. Do you want us to just let you know if you email? Would you like to report it? I would like to report it publicly. I'd like the, okay. the report to, to be amended and reflected accordingly so that the public has an opportunity to know how it's done. So do you, are you not going to... I'm not going to. Control? I will not move. If someone else okay. wants to move, it's acceptance. That's up to them. But I will not. Um, I, I just want it all appropriately accounted for. Okay. And I realize it might be an oversight. But sure. And, and either way, we'll report on this in the December meeting. Yeah. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes, I'm, I'm so good. <laughs> okay, on page 131, item 4, uh, the Recreation Department had an increase in 21, of 21000 in related rental income from August 19 compared to 18. Um, curious what that is? We, we'll have to check on that as well. We this have report is the same groups each year, so I We do, although every once in a while we do have an extra rental. Um, so this report is intended to be an overview, not necessarily a reconciliation of all the costs, but we can sure. go back and look at that for you. So I was busy taking the note on the other one. This was item number which on page 131? Page 131, item 4. Thanks. Four. Because it, it represents 106,000. And, and let me be clear, given, given the tone of that comment, and that is that Thanks. that I do appreciate the fact that, that this is substantially more information than we'll be able to pass. Mm -hmm. However, when you do give information, um, it, it sometimes whets the appetite for more, and so I want to make sure that the information is correct so that we don't get emails eventually asking why the discrepancy. Um, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Table number five, and we'll go to item four. Any public comment? All right, five, <coughs> All right, then let's move to item 12. All right, I would appreciate an explanation for the $288,000 for a three and a half million dollar project. It just feels pretty high to me. Well, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, in preparing, uh, for 
the what seems to be the, the largest single resurfacing project uh, in recent memory. Um, I wanted to ensure that we were going to be able to deliver the project on time, on schedule, and on budget. So in my experience, projects of this dollar amount necessitate uh, a dedicated uh, engineering perspective, a, a dedicated engineer to uh, do the design work, and then a dedicated construction manager inspection um, service to, to make sure it gets done um, in accordance with the plans and specifications. So uh, what I did earlier this year was uh, send out a request for proposals. Um, I received two, and as it describes in there, um, after going through the uh, selection process, TransTech, who is currently our city traffic engineer, provided the, the best uh, proposal in terms of how they were going to approach the job and uh, their approach and the expertise that they, they brought. The other firm uh, was uh, not, not qualified and, and really submitted a very poor um, proposal as to how they were going to do the work. So I sat down with uh, TransTech and uh, squeezed them as much as I could uh, in order to, to have the, both the cost of the design work and the cost of the construction management in proportion to if we were to gear up on our own internally what that, what that dollar amount would look like. Uh, the uh, $33,000 fee for design services is less than 2% of the total uh, project budget and in my experience, usually projects of, of this nature, you spend about 10% in design. Did you say 33 is 65,000? 985 for design. Well, I think if you take a look at or, exhibit B1 of the agreement, which is right. page. No, no, I know. Okay, uh, 328. Yeah, what, what I asked uh, TransTech to do was um, their, their original proposal. Um, split it, uh, made it not very clear as to what the uh, design fee would be. So so what I did was I, I asked them to to look at it in a, in a variety of different ways. And uh, yes, it, it is uh, the 65900 because that includes the, what they did was they, they had their management and administration buried or put into their design fee instead of splitting it out between a construction phase and the design phase. So when you look at uh, exhibit B1, at the top it says design phase services 32,500 and then below that advertisement and the construction phase and then uh, management and administration. They're, they're showing it based on the phase of the project versus in B2 which was in their original proposal sort of did not, did not characterize it or uh, categorize it rather in the locations that we, in, in my profession, traditionally look at what's your design fee. So um, I did that in order to have it a basis of understanding was their design fee, was their construction management fee, within the general parameters of what you see in the, in the uh, civil engineering industry. Typically, design fees are around 10% of what your construction cost is or your budget is. In this particular case, um, in a uh, a more uh, energetic environment, perhaps of design, you would be looking at maybe a two or three hundred thousand dollar design fee. They have it far less than that, and that is in proportion of what I asked them to do. I asked them to do very simple, um, basic uh, engineering plans and specifications because it's not really a very um, complex project. It's just a lot of it. So then the next part that I looked at uh, with them was their construction management and inspection. And for that, that's really where the, the, the uh, metaphorical rubber is meeting the road because having a good inspection and good management from our side of a three plus million dollar paving project is, is pretty important. Uh, it is three times the size of the project that we did in-house this past year and it does exceed um, our abilities to keep up with it while performing all the other great things that we in the city. So, um, from the perspective of um, the general cost of construction management is anywhere between 10 and 20 percent of your 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 total budget as well. And so you're looking at that's a little bit more closer to what the industry 
would typically see for a project of this magnitude. Uh, in my experience down in uh, the South Bay, we would do $5 million a year of resurfacing, and our design costs were usually around $300,000 a year, and then an equal amount, uh, maybe actually a little bit more for the construction management. Because you have, you're doing a lot of work in a variety of different locations in the town. It's just not focused in one area. The contractor is moving about the town, and you want to make sure you have full-time eyes paying attention to all the different work zones that they have going on. So that is, um, in, a, in a long roundabout way, why we come up with this and why the, the costs are way down. How many weeks of painting do you think it will be? I mean, it's probably six weeks of work, if not eight weeks of work. Um, For the actual laying of the asphalt? The, the laying of the asphalt is usually a very fast process. Okay. It's the preparation, it's the grinding process, it is the traffic control process. Um, there is um, things that you do to have the contractor prepare. Um, there there well, are what, what better they, replacement that goes on. Yes, it is for, for the prep to the finish in terms of weeks for three and a half million dollars? Um, it's probably a hundred working days, you know, I would estimate at this moment. Okay. You know, because I did the quick math on their estimate of 1260 hours, that's 30 weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, that sounds like that's more supervision than the work being done. Well, we I did ask them that um, when, when they're here, they provide a full crew, so more than likely there's more than one individual that, that will be here. There's also the management of, of the contract to make sure the invoices are being paid and, that, and that's obviously office work, that's not the, the, the field work, which is really critical to make sure that they're progressing in due course and that you're getting what it is, you're getting what you're paying. For. And hiring a consultant for this, are there other ways to provide the same supervision that would be less expensive? Well, I could be as so bold as to say uh, if there was a, another uh, professional engineer on staff, that would be part of the duties of that engineer to uh, be responsible for performing those those roles. Yeah, because what I'm, I'm obviously thinking about is a you know a part time or a different consultant and not an engineering firm, and how come this is paid for separately than from the asphalt or from the the street reconstruction company? I would assume that. That, that would be part of their scope of work as well. I'm just having a hard time getting my head around $290,000 for a $3.5 million project when it's not coordinating lots of subcontractors that you were building, you know, the building is pretty it's, it's really the It's really the construction management inspection, which is uh, the engineering service, the engineering portion of it is really straightforward. It's very simple bread and butter work especially as I've designed the, the layout for the, the designer, that it's um, very simple like the plans that we did last year, which were very, very simple plans, but enough to communicate what we wanted to do. But then the less you put on the plans, the more you put into the field. So you want someone out there that's upholding your standards of what it is that you um, install. Uh, you could uh, certainly look for a, a part-time person uh, to, to do the work. Uh, that is not necessarily, in, in, from my perspective, as desirable as having someone full-time that as they're not working on this project, they're not just billing me for that half hour, they're also doing other things engineering-wise within the city to help deliver projects. I'm sorry, did Paul comment? So, it, um, and I've, I've, I've used part-time um, employees or part-time consultants. It, there's a, I'm certainly sure that there are uh, helpers and personnel issues related to for how you characterize them. Um, but if you have someone that is on staff, they can be monitoring this project while simultaneously working on something else. So you get the benefit of that. If you have someone that you just hired for a single assignment, it's very similar to having a consultant, is when you need them, they're here, and then when they're not, they, they're, they've gone away. So if you have someone here that's working on that, working that project uh, out in the field, but at the same time can be doing design in the office, at the same time can be uh, doing other engineering work in the city, you're, you're gaining more 
uh, more benefit out of your, your personnel than that. Did, did you look at what the county might cost to come in and run the service for us? I did not look at the county. That would be interesting. Can you? Legally? Yes. I mean, you, you, you put it out for bid, but they'd have to... The county does not normally come in on a personal basis. Yeah. yeah, you put it out. You put it out for bid. You get so many bids back. I, I, I'm looking for a creative way to provide the same service, but not spend close to three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, well, I appreciate and I, that. And, and I and I know the county isn't that far away. And I visited them once, and they had a menu of prices that they would do things for. So I I think it would be worth a call to see what other ways we could provide the same support and maybe do it for less. I also had a problem with this, but uh, I'm not sure about the county move, but uh, in terms of hiring TransTech, because it is a large design firm, and this project, I think, as you said, is not that complicated. There's just a lot of it. Um, and so I tried to figure out the math based upon their numbers and based upon, and essentially you're paying almost, what, $46,000 a month for them to oversee this. And that's a lot of money whether that comes out in terms of part-time person or an outside consultant or county, I think that that is too much to manage something that is relatively simplistic in the sense like we've been repairing our roads and, and you have done it. I understand the scale is more ambitious this year, but not to the tune of almost $300,000. So I also would like to see some other ideas come forward and if, if that's something I would ask you to explore with our city manager and come back to us with some creative alternatives because I'm not comfortable spending this large amount. And, and just to further um, explain, I did speak to some people who um, have experience in construction management, and I understand it's in the corporate world, but um, everybody felt like for a big project, yes, you know, you can get a 1020, but that's when they're also managing dozens of different contractors and you're putting in electricity and foundations and whatever, plumbing, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. And that's not the situation here. So their thought was if you're managing one sub, it should be like 2% of a contract or 3%, but not approaching nine. And so I was trying to see, based upon what you were saying, um, if there was more because I couldn't really figure it out. I know that they're doing this design work and in part you, you already did a significant amount with, with your experience um, for this last year that I think somebody could come in and build on and that's something I know needs to be done and I don't you know know if you have the time or the scope to do it for this project but the management issue for me was was just too much um, for the fee to come in at over 225,000 or thereabouts for them to maintain and particularly when you look at the time I mean that's a, a significant amount of money you're, voting to, in addition to the cost of, yeah. of actually improving our streets. What, what, what's your deadline on this? I mean, when do you have to have somebody in place to start the work? We would like to go out to work? bid, and this winter is the best time, so we get the best price. Uh, the, the vice mayor is absolutely correct. Uh, is the, the best time to go out to bid is about Soon. in January because the contractors are lining up their work. The further you get into good weather, the more they get busy, and the more now you're paying a premium for their, um, for their participation here. Um, if I might uh, offer the council, the critical item in this particular item is getting the design yeah, done. That's and Can we then and separate it? We could slice it, and I've talked to the two, to TransTech, and they're more than willing to just do one part as we, uh, as I go back and look at these other, uh, these other options. We have time for that. Um, it's the design part that I start to get a little. And the design is 32.5? That's 32.5. I would appreciate it if we did that. Very yeah, I'd, like I'd, suggestion. I'd, I'd, I'd be comfortable going ahead with the design and then let's figure out how for different ways to do this. <laughs> uh, I'm totally up for that. Um, my whole goal is, because this is a very large project, I want to make sure that I get it delivered to you, and then we start building it in the spring, so that when it comes July 1st, I come back to you and say, okay, that project's done. I want to spend another $3.5 million, and you'll all be excited about it. Council Member Kierkowski had a question. Yes, I have a question and um, a comment. 
and I'm sort of coming at this from a different angle. Um, those of us, and I think most of uh, the council members have, have attended meetings with other cities like the League of Cities or the Council of Governments, and, and we know how big um, TransTech is. And they do have a good reputation. Um, but that sort of worries me in terms of eliminating competition. Um, they really are huge, and to that I have a question and a comment. You said the second proposal had a poor understanding of the project. Did they make any contact with you, or did they simply submit a what might have been the appropriate bid? Um, they uh, submitted a proposal, and in reviewing their proposal, they um, did not uh, understand the simple language I used of basically, I need a very simple set of plans and specifications. I gave them a copy of last year's project, and I said, I want you to provide me a proposal on this, and that if your proposal was acceptable, we would open up your, your, your costs and, and see what you were. Um, they did not understand that at all. And so if they can't understand that, and that's a very clear, I was very clear that that's exactly what I wanted. I did not want a full and complete set of plans because you can go nuts on that, spend buckets of money, and spend 10% of three, three and a half million dollars. Totally not necessary here. And if they were not understanding that, um, I was not very confident that then their construction management end of things was going to be any, any better. Yes, they, um, without uh, going too far afield, and the attorney will keep me in line here, um, but their, while their costs were competitive, they were not going to be able to do the work. We were going to have to spend way more time to get them to what it is that we want. And again, I'm going back to the point that it's feeling like TransTech just isn't running into a lot of competition these days, which has its own issues. And the final thing that I'd like to comment about the administration of TransTech, um, their eight top administrators are all men. At this point, there are enough women graduating with STEM degrees that they might want to think about diversifying since they're really covering a lot of the state with their projects, and we hope that you can maybe pass that along. Um, they're a huge company, and we just want to see more uh, complete options when we are bidding. Thank you. Which, Council Neal? Yes, and I have a question as well. And I, I, what was the reason that you did not include their numbers so that we had something to compare it to? Is that is that a legal requirement? Or because when I see other reports, I see that we're getting, you know, contractor A bid this, B bid this, C bid that, D bid this amount. This was the lowest, but for some reason we didn't feel comfortable it's up to you to make the decision. That didn't happen in this instance. All we got was trans tax. And I was wondering, was there a legal reason for it? The Business and Professions Code um, protects the proprietary information of their cost proposals from everyone else. So you're required by state law to, to select based on qualifications. So you rank them based <clears> on <throat> qualifications, and you take the first one, you say, and you open up their cost envelope. and. If you don't have sticker shock or you can negotiate with them, then you work through the process with them. If you're unable to complete satisfactory negotiations with them, then they're discarded and you go to number two. How in the, how in the past have we had comparative uh, bids? We've had at least that information. You're allowed to do that with uh, public construction contracts and non-engineering um, or architecture um, design services. They are protected by law of not have their information publicly disclosed. Well, so the only thing that would have been protected in this instance is the design. The remainder would have been subject to our... It was all part of the professional services that they were going to be offering. So that would that was covered in that. These are public contracts, too. See, I mean, how can you, how can you as, a, as a city council decide whether or not you're getting something appropriate, have a public hearing on it, not have the information, but once again, I'm probably it's complaining happened. about the city it's and the state. happened a couple times this year. Sometimes there are public, sometimes they're not. Yeah, that it depends upon the services and because of the, of the business of 
special transactions that Mike was talking about that specifically covers and protects uh, the professional services of architects and engineers. So it's an engineering factor that... Yeah. Okay. The design services. Yep. The design, and if it has that aspect, then yes. it's... That's right. I see. Uh, ask the legislature, but it is to protect their proprietary um, information. In, and in, whether you agree or not, that's what they have put in the business of the do, And I don't mean to be starting a battle with another council member over something that, that is uh, probably appropriate to hint at, um, but we as a council, unless we're dealing with a minority of the business and they get value from that, we shouldn't be in any way trying to dictate the way they do business or who manages their business. Um, and I understand your comment, maybe. It, it is merely a comment, certainly nothing that we can put into a contract. A company this huge, with that much business in the state, it's simply something that we would like to see. Well, no, no means beyond that. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, okay, I understand. All right, any other questions? Okay, then I'm going to open this to the public. Any questions from the public? Any comments? Seeing none. Okay, now back to comments. Uh, Council Member Yudi, you want to go? Yeah, I, I like the breaking the uh, you know the proposal into two and go forward with the design and hold back on the supervision and figure out a more creative, cost-efficient way to do that. I just can't believe that you know what quarter million dollars to supervise. For 30 weeks, is you know, there's got to be something there. Uh, I can support further exploration. As we were told, I concur with the breaking. Vice Mayor? Yes, I think that, that would be the best approach for this. I concur too. Um, do I have a motion? I move to award a professional design services agreement in the amount of $32,500. Transtech Engineers of Chino, California, for the design services for the FY1920 Street Rehabilitation Project and authorize the city manager to execute a revised agreement on behalf of the city. I'll second that. Um, roll call, please. Councilmember Jacobowski? Yes. Councilmember Tall? Uh, yes. Councilmember Yudi? Yes. Vice Mayor Shepard Romney? Yes. Mayor Huang? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Council. Thank you. I'll pull number nine just. Yes, so I'm sorry. I apologize, uh, Mr. John Justin. I'm sorry I overlooked. Please come up. Uh, John, item number nine. Uh, good evening again. Um, I just wanted to make a couple comments. Uh, I'm not either for or against the extension of the contract. I think that's perfectly appropriate. Uh, I just know that you'll be looking at a replacement contract coming up soon, and uh, I think it's important to figure out a way to um, have a verification project process that you're getting what you're paying for. I mean, just my anecdotal experiences, I haven't seen a street sweeper go by my house in a long time. It used to be a fairly regular occurrence, even though it happens you know, early in the morning. Um, I did happen to catch a street sweeper, not this last Friday, but the Friday prior, and they went by my house at a quarter to eight, which is actually outside their time window to do the sweeping. Um, because I I look at my street, and I know the day that they're supposed to sweep it, and I cannot tell that it's been swept. And well, years and years ago, you could tell. You get up in the morning, you see the street, it looks different, it's clean. It doesn't, it hasn't looked that way in years. Uh, so the street sweeper went by, I ran out, looked at the gutter, it, it looked untouched. Um, if anything, it looked worse because the brush was like pulling asphalt out of the street and throwing rocks everywhere. Um, so I just think that that's important to figure out a way to verify that you're getting what you're paying for. All right. Um, um, Dr. Muller, can you follow up on that piece with the absence? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now the treasurer's report. Mr. Hunt, please come up. Before we get there, I just want to make a comment. Uh, Drew Boucher from the uh, school district was here. Um, uh, Boucher. She just, Boucher. Boucher, pardon Boucher. Me. She, uh, she wanted to thank the city for uh, the various uh, items that we agreed to, um, but she decided not to pull them 
a request that we resolve. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, and Mayor Powell. <laughs> I'm still here. Nice job, Mayor. I promise this is going to be short, all right? <laughs> As of the end of September, September 30th, we have a total of $28,620,000 in our portfolio, out of which we have 49%, about $14 million and change in our bank account and 28% about $8 million and plus in LAFE, 15% about $4.2 million in CDs, and 8% $2.2 million in various bonds. Um, the LAFE on, the interest rate on LAFE is about 2.28% as of the end of September. CDs we're looking at 1.95, bond is at 1.56, but the ne negotiated interest rate on the money market account is at 2.47%. So that's why we have a lot of our liquidity in the bank accounts. And in my package, I always include the reserve requirement maintained by our current financial institution. So they maintain a lot more than what's required by state code or government code. The total portfolio, uh, combined portfolio interest rate for the end of September is about 2.26%. For the month of September, we did two, we purchased two CDs, and they're top grade CDs, um, all at our maximum $250,000 FDIC insurance coverage. One is at 2.5 years tenor, and the other one is five years. And we will be getting our first property tax payment in December, so we will be monitoring our reserve balance and invest the uh, liquidity accordingly. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions? The council? Yeah, I have a, a, a quick one. Mm -hmm. With your schedule on page 394, it would be interesting to see, you know, a, a monthly, a month end tally going so we can see how the reserve, how the reserve is growing or, or declining. Because it's 28.6 now, you know, do you remember January about what the cash investments were in January? Uh, I can pull the report. No, just, just take it. Okay, all right. We'll do it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Any question from the public? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, next is new business. I move to see the support. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Say that. We'll try to pass. Now, new business item number 14. Thank you so much. This item you'll see is directed to you by the police department. This is actually raised by our city attorney's office, so we're actually going to have our city attorney present this item to you. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, the, vehicle code set, the vehicle code gives authorities to cities to prohibit or restrict parking during all or certain hours of the days. And so, pursuant to that, the City of San Marino has adopted an ordinance that set forth, sets forth its various parking time limitations and requirements, one of which is that, um, currently, that someone cannot park a vehicle for 48 consecutive hours on the street. Um, the vehicle code also gives authority to cities to tow vehicles um, if a vehicle is left standing on a street for 72 or more consecutive hours. And for some reason, um, that portion of the city's ordinance, which states that vehicles can be towed after 48 hours, does not line up with the authority granted to the city under the vehicle code. And that's vehicle code section 22651K as in um, as in K. <laughs> um, so the bottom the bottom line here, here is that the city should amend its ordinance to comply with the the um, authority given to it under state law with respect to the 72 hour parking requirement. There, um, I understand that concerns have been expressed by members of the public about not changing the 48 hour 
uh, maximum time period and instead leaving, um, leaving that as is. So before you this evening, we have pro uh, provided an amended ordinance that keeps the restriction that no one shall park on any street a vehicle for longer than 48 consecutive hours, but may also includes the change that after 72 hours, the vehicle can be towed. So that way, the city is completely in compliance with state law by setting the hours restriction that you want, but not towing until 72 hours. Um, I'm here to answer any questions, and uh, that's the end of my report. Yes, so Council, you're then saying that the end of 48 hours a car can be tagged and there'll be a fine and then 24 hours later can be towed. Well, that's correct. Thank you. Councilman Tolt? Excuse my total confusion over there, but I thought we had a restriction against overnight parking. I'm sorry, say again? We have a restriction against overnight parking on, on streets. Is is uh, people get uh, fined for doing that yes uh, unless we get a permit from uh, um, or advise the sheriff's department does this change this is all no okay. that does not because you've got a separate section that prevents parking from i believe if i remember correctly from 2 a.m to uh, five or six something like that but it prevents the overnight parking so this does not change that but it is this other section that allow that prevents someone from parking for consecutive times as well. Okay, as long as it doesn't change that. Council Member Yudi, no questions. Vice Mayor. No, I just well, I wanted to thank the city attorney um, because we spoke or, about this today, and I appreciate that you modified it so that the 48 hours, which is the wish of the community. Um, and the residents will still be part of it, and it just gives the authority now more clearly to our police department than when they can do the towing. So I think this is a perfect compromise um, that we're trying to respect the community's long-standing wishes in this regard. So thank you very much for your prompt work. Okay, thank you. Um, any public comments? Seeing none, any comments from the council? We we'll have a motion. So if you give us just a second, Council is trying to revise the motion. So the motion would just be to um, introduce the ordinance for first reading by title only, ordinance number 0-19-1358, an ordinance of the City of San Marino amending section 15.07.05 of Article 7 of Chapter 15 of the San Marino Municipal Code by increasing the uh, time period by which vehicles can be towed uh, to 72 hours. So moved. I'll second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passed. Item 15. Thank you, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> The City Council adopted an economic development plan as a priority initiative for this fiscal year. The goal of this plan is to develop incentives and programs that facilitate the improvement of the city's commercial corridors. The first step to developing a program was to form a team to help staff and the council liaisons to develop ideas and strategies for this plan. The team meets regularly twice a month and includes Councilmember Jacobowski, Councilmember Yudi, uh, includes Shelly Boyle, which is a current planning commission member, uh, Kelly Karpiak, who is the owner of the Toy Bookstore, Isaac Hong, who has multiple businesses along Huntington Drive, Karina Madelian, who has a business on Mission Street, Nancy White, who owns the Frame Shop, and Linda Zadoyan, who owns the San Marino Cafe. Um, the city has also onboarded Barry Foster of HDL Econ Solutions to provide up-to-date demographic information uh, to the city. To date, Barry has provided the Insight Market Study, which is attached to the SAP report, uh, this study includes demographics and analytics uh, that are within the boundaries of the city. In a few weeks, Barry uh, and HDL will supply the city with an additional inside market analysis that includes the trade area, which includes demographics and analytics of uh, information that's, that's outside the city. Uh, the final deliverable will include a three-year economic development action plan that will help shape the direction and focus of the team and the city. 
In our meetings, the team has discussed a variety of issues including code barriers, parking options, administrative roadblocks, streamlining the process, incentive programs, uh, as an example in the staff report, the facade improvement program, as well as the small business program, and target demographics. In the next few weeks, the team will begin to focus uh, and discuss marketing strategies and the approach for communicating such a plan to the public using a variety of methods, which includes approaching uh, PTA meetings, as well as rotary meetings and, and other types of uh, public meetings. Um, in between this step, staff will draft new code provisions as discussed in the report and proceed to the normal code adoption process. Staff will begin to introduce these code amendments at the beginning of the year. The incentive programs, uh, which may include, for example, the facade improvement program, small business incentives, as well as the potential of waiving some of the fees as an incentive, will need further vetting during the budget process and will likely be presented to the council for next fiscal year. The information that we obtain uh, through the team, that we develop through the team, as well as information that is provided by the HDO consultant, will be uploaded to the city website for the public to view. Um, I will pass around, uh, as I mentioned, the third and final deliverable of HDL. This is a sample of, of a product they provided to the city, but i like for the council to take a look at this as I pass it by. Uh, the, the city and the staff has also developed um, a website on our city webpage that includes uh, new information related to economic development, which includes the vacancy list, uh, it includes uh, active businesses that are in town, uh, it does include incentive programs for, for small businesses. Uh, we've also added um, the, the marketing of available sites on our website. For example, if you go to our website and click on a link that's associated to a construction project, it'll send you to a separate uh, link that provides a marketing strategy for that property owner. Uh, staff has also developed some tools for ourselves that help um, sort of uh, visualize sort of our plan. And we developed a map of the central business district to identify a lot of the districts and the nodes that are currently available to us in the city. Uh, the, 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 that map is fairly large. I do have it rolled out at the public counter for anyone who wants to go and see it. I'm hoping that I can condense that to put that on the city website. Uh, but for now, if, if anyone is interested, is out on the counter uh, for, the, for the meantime. And so with that said, I'd like to give a moment to our council liaisons to provide comments and feedback uh, before we move forward. Uh, first, I want to you know thank Aldo and Stephanie, and, and you should know that you know to get meetings twice a month, you know, is it, pretty stout, and to get a good representation of businesses to come and participate, you know, it's it, it, it's a good process of, that they're running, and I think it's important for us to you know get ready to financially support this so that we can attract more businesses and businesses we we have. Uh, I'll say protect them because you know I've been in business a lot, but I've never had the guts to sign the personal guarantee in the lease. So those people that have the guts to do that, I have a lot of respect for, and we should support them. Um, and I'd also like to thank Aldo and Stephanie. Um, I know Aldo has um, attended a number of different conferences and training where some future wave thinking has been going on. And similarly, um, I'm very, very impressed with the business owners in town who have voluntarily given their time to this effort. As we know, in the coming year, retail is changing. Um, stores as we know them are becoming multi-purpose. Um, much is moving out and different concepts are coming in. Um, I am extremely impressed at this very, very early stage of the creative thoughts that are coming about. And I, too, um, share uh, Councilman Udi's hope that we can bring some exciting new concepts to you in the new year. Thank you. Councilman Matold? Uh, yes, I appreciate both uh, Aldo and Department of Director Cervantes and uh, the staff's work as well as the liaisons. The one point, um, and I've been appreciative of the effort, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to, send any misinformation out there to the public with respect to us, you know, suddenly decide to uh, open a CBS yeah. or anything like that. So, 
that they understand that, that through the concept of this council liaison and as, as well as the local business owners, that what we're trying to do is make sure that we're, uh, we, we remain the same in the environment, except we improve the environment that they operate. Thank you. Vice Mayor. I also can uh, would echo my fellow colleagues uh, comments about this being done I was um, did have a couple questions so I don't know if we're just questioning or commenting at this point um, but in your uh, summary here I, I was most interested to see the facade improvements because I do think that is affecting our businesses and um, so I appreciated the effort and I don't know um, I, if people are interested, uh, page 418 of our, no, sorry, 419, um, is you actually talk about the financials of the incentive. This, this, I don't know if you, yeah. Um, and so in here it said, excuse me, $10,000 per uh, facade um, is, a, is, a, is uh, the funds available. And then it had another 5000 as a discretionary additional grant amount. And so I was interested in what triggers that extra money. And I, I don't know the cost of redoing facades and uh, commercial businesses at all. Um, so I'm wondering, is this number that was significant? Is this the norm in this for a facade improvement? Have you had anybody study what uh, People are investing, and also my concern is that somebody might use a facade improvement to improve the look of their building, but that doesn't mean they're going to rent it. They've just gotten money from the city to fix the front, and so there's no um, sort of like we talked about before uh, with other groups. If we're giving them something, then I think that there also should be a requirement that it's an active listing for a business to go in, for example, or if it's running that there's some commitment. I know they can't come back again within 10 years, but I also wanted something to say, no, and you're going to put a business in there. It's not just to improve a vacant storefront, um, which we seem to have an increasing amount of. So I, I don't know how you draft that properly, but I do know that other cities do have facade agreements, so I'm sure there's, uh, that's my suggestion for something to add. Um, but I think that's a brilliant way to get and hopefully update the look of our, our commercial center a little bit and, again, attract people who drive by. And, um, and businesses to come here. And, and, and part of the, the brainstorming process, I just threw out a number and said, let's, let's throw $200,000 at this and see what happens. Right. You know, just to get the lid off the concern with, with money to see what ideas came up. And this is one of the ideas and, you know, appreciate and agree with, you know, how to tweak and massage that. But what we're you know, trying to say is let's be business friendly. We don't make any money off the sales taxes anyway, so maybe there's relief there. You know, if it looks more attractive, more consistent, might get a better look and feel. So, you know, I think you know the, the committee is taking that spirit forward. No, I think it's brilliant. So I I'm, I'm, was very happy to see that. I also was interested. I think on page, hold on for a second. There was one other thing in the report or the work that's been done so far that I wanted to ask you about, and that had to do with the vacancies. So. I do see, and I, I thank you because I think at the town hall we didn't have this information, so it's been provided, uh, page 449 of our packet. And I was interested to see, so is this up to date? Uh, and are these truly vacant, or are these things that are open for sale or for lease? Because, for example, like Colonial Kitchen, obviously, is still operating, it's not vacant. Right. But um, I know that they're interested in selling the property. So I'm just wondering, this is, encompasses that situation as well as flat out vacant space. Well, it, 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 as of a month ago, it's, it was up to date, but, but the way we label that list is not so much of a vacancy list. We label it as a business opportunity. Okay. And so the reason why Colonial Kitchen is on there, although it's not vacant, it is for sale, which is a, an opportunity. And so we want to sort of get away from using the, the word vacancy, rather, rather using a positive word of opportunity. Okay, and so, so you need to update the... Right, right. It says vacancy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and is this the type of thing, is this what you're referring to is on our website? Correct. So if somebody was interested, say, in looking at finding new a place, then they could go to this list and drive by and Correct. see what's available. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that work, and, and um, it'd be good to keep that up to date, and hopefully this will. Yeah, that, that list, if, if I may, that list um, is what drives a lot of our communication with potential businesses. 
is, is they see that list and, and they immediately call me to ask about the property, the, their lease rates, um, uh, who the ownership is, to, so that way we can sort of get, get them both at the table for negotiation. So in, in my short history of working this program, that list has been, been pretty critical for us to start the dialogue process. Okay, and the last, the final thing I'm sorry is that I need to bring up is, uh, due to the length of time, I think it would be useful to know how long some of the spots have been vacant. Um, because we have an ever-growing number, and both we have some that have been there, I, I think probably going on a decade of vacancies. And to me, that's a loss of money for whoever owns that. But also, it's a loss to the community because that space that's not serving some purpose is obviously not giving us sales tax. And most importantly, it's more work for our police officers and potentially our fire because now you have an unoccupied place. They're having to check on, keep an eye on, and as we know, related to a house, actually people move in and sometimes uh, worse things happen from there. So there is a criminal element that our city needs to consider. And since public safety is very important to me, and and uh, the council members as well as the community. My concern is, and I think I spoke to the city attorney about this, and I know that we're going to do a fee structure, that there should be an assessment on vacant uh, businesses just like we do at homes. So they should have to register with our police. There should be a fee that they pay so because it does cost our city. Um, and I don't know what the proper method is. I know that we're thinking about doing this, the fee schedule review sort of, but I wanted to highlight this for you that this might be something that we need to go in the direction of because it is costing our city resources and it's just sitting there vacant. So it's not a contributing in a lot of ways. Those and, are my and, thoughts on that and I don't know. In my research in, in doing the uninhabitable ordinance, mm -hmm. uh, some cities actually have for both residential and commercial. Right. And so we can certainly look at um, you know, coming back with that ordinance as we're tweaking it at the moment, adding a commercial a piece to that if the council wishes to see that and but I, and I would say yes but I would also like to see a more significant fee for commercial because otherwise you're not motivating them and one thing to say a resident you know might have a house that's held by a family you know that's a second home or something and I don't necessarily want to penalize residents who pay property taxes but we have businesses here um, who do have the, the same concerns so there should be a cost leaving it empty, that's my view, or fee, because it should go to our public safety, support our public safety. All right, I don't have any questions. Do we have any questions from the public? Seeing none. Um, comment? Any comments? I just want to thank uh, Director Cervantes and uh, also the council liaisons and all the volunteers uh, for your efforts and time. Okay, um, so this is a receive and file. I have, a, I have a motion. I move to receive and apply all the emails. It's your name. Go for it. Okay, somebody, please. Okay, do you have a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, uh, roll call. Councilmember Jacobowski. Yes. Councilmember Tall? Yes. Councilmember Heaney? Yes. Vice Mayor Shepard Romney? Yes. Mayor uh, Long? Yes. Anyway, our motion passed. Um, I'll be hearing item 16. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, the next item is the item regarding the building code adoption process. Uh, the state's uh, health and safety code mandates that the California Building Standards Commission adopt and published the California Building Standards Code every three years. Uh, the state's health and safety code also requires local governments to also do the same thing and adopt the California Building Codes. Uh, local um, uh, jurisdictions have the opportunity of drafting local amendments as long as they are more restrictive than that of the state law. Uh, at the prior meeting, the council expressed concerns re regarding the fire codes with respect to the mandate on fire sprinklers. The fire department will be drafting new language and we'll be presenting those codes and those provisions, as well as some additional thresholds at the beginning of the, of the year uh, to address some of those concerns. Um, staff has also incorporated additional language into the staff report to address uh, and to summarize the historic building codes and how we intend to use the historic building codes 
with our newly adopted historic process. Um, as stated last month, the most significant change with respect, is with respect to the prohibition of natural wood roofs. Uh, staff has provided the council with our latest uh, edition of our pre-approved roof materials list. Um, and if this motion is, is approved, uh, January 1st, wood shake and wood shingle roofs would be removed from that list. Um, with this uh, move of eliminating wood, natural wood materials from the list, staff feels confident that the materials that are on there currently are sufficient for the public. I will pass around uh, some brochures uh, not to advertise these products, but these are the products that are, are very popular in town. Um, if the council would like to see uh, these here. Uh, these are the products that the residents uh, generally like to see and, and to purchase uh, because they do provide a, a, uh, a wood-like or wood-simulated simulated look as the natural product does as well. Um, although the city would not incur any fiscal impact with respect to this modification, the residents will proceed Residents who proceed with construction past this code amendment will see a rise in construction costs. For example, the construction uh, after 2020 will mandate solar panels for any new construction or new single family home. Because of that mandate from the state, it looks to increase cost, construction costs of about $9,500 for that development. Um, in addition to that cost, the new energy standards are going to require uh, certain measures take place in order to reduce the energy use for, of a home. And so that includes more energy efficiency windows, a uh, greater amount of insulation, um, different types of roofing uh, installation methods will also add to cost to residents. And so with that said, staff recommends the council uh, approve and adopt the ordinance number 019-1357 and also adopt the resolution of findings. Question, Councilman Mitchell. We we have to outlaw wood. We we don't have to outlaw wood roofs. We can certainly leave it. Right now, we did well about six months ago. We did remove uh, natural wood shake and shingles from our pre-approved list. Um, in order to apply for natural wood shake or shingles, you have to go through design review. Uh, but I believe that I'm gonna actually gonna relay that question over to the fire chief. I think he has a lot more information related to the impacts to maintaining natural wood roofs. Yes. Just, um, I did read the historic portion online, the California Code provisions from the website, and it does talk about how if a potential historic resource or, you're in his, or your home is in a historic zone, uh, that our city will be adopting that they are allowed to have wood. There are different rules that apply. And wood roofs, there's a specific right. paragraph in this story. So most of the homes here, not most, but many of the homes, particularly if the survey comes back with a large uh, neighborhood areas that uh, qualify potentially as historic zones, then it would be out of the regular requirement and you can keep the same, I think the concept is, if I'm understanding, and I didn't print it out, and I meant to today, um, it has to do with keeping, maintaining the same. So if you have a wood shake, you can replace it. So that will be covered, I assume, by adopting a historic section within this, so that the homes in that regard can keep the same. Thank you. That's my interpretation, but maybe Chief uh, or Aldo. No, it's, it's certainly a, 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 a wood roof is a, is a character defining feature of a home and if it's a qualified historic landmark it falls under, under the historic building code and it, it protects that. But, Say, it, but the building code, but the historic part of the building code even applies to zones, which was my point. Right. You right. don't have to have your individual home. Oh right, yes that's correct. But, you know, or, yeah. or do work to have that certain right. or recognize I guess is a better word. Any other question? Seeing none, any question from the public? Any public here? Yes, no, please come up. Well, Sir Rook? I just wanted to talk to you today about the wood shingles issue. You know, there are so many substitute materials that resemble probably cosmetically a wood roof. A wood roof is a very dangerous thing to have. I have one I had it taken off, but that's beside the point. I think we should continue to be very restrictive even in the historic area. Um, 
having a substitute shingle material that resembles a wood roof and not use wood itself to be very safeguard uh, against fires that it represents. Any other comments? But uh, just to, um, uh, to answer you, they do talk about also in the historic building code that the treatment on wood shingles will be different. So they have to raise, instead of, I don't know that much about fire retardant treatments of wood, but um, new homes have to have an A or a B rating, and I believe whichever it is, um, the uh, historic homes are allowed to have a B rating. So it's wood that's treated as opposed to being. Wood has a line of expectancy. It washes out. It's only good for about five years, and then it's not good again. And your wood works going to last 25 or 30 years, and now your hazard is back again. All right, thank you. I'm going to close that portion of the public hearing. Yes? No, I, I didn't know if there was a question, so I. So I can... Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, comments? Do I have a motion? I move to adopt ordinance number 0-19-1357 and the resolution R-19-28. Do uh, I have a second? Second. Um, and Mr. Mayor, we're going to read the title of the ordinance. Ordinance, ordinance number O 19-1357, an ordinance of the City of San Marino adopting by reference the 2019 editions of the California Administrative Building, Mechanical, Plumbing, Electrical, Residential, Fire, Energy, Green Building Standards, Historical Building, Existing Building, Appendix J, Los, An uh, Los Angeles County, Grading Standards, and Reference Standards Code, with certain am amendments deletions and additions and amending chapter 25 of the San Marino City Code. Yeah, um, roll call? Yes, please. A point of clarification now. Um, can we or should we add something into the requirement that the that issue concerning fire sprinklers will be brought back to us? I think we already understand that direction. So I would, if you want to make that a motion, that would be second. Well, I should make a motion. I, I just wanted to know whether or not it could be part of the motion. I prefer it be a separate motion. Okay. Yeah, roll call, please. Councilmember Jacobowski? Yes. Councilmember Tall? Yes. Councilmember Yudi? Yes. Vice Mayor Shepard Romney? Yes. Mayor Huang? Yes. Motion passed. Councilmember Tall, do you want to make a motion? No, I, I, I do believe the direction is clear. I will. Right. Okay. All right. Um, well, since our Mayor Todd is still here, Councilman Member, you the uh, motion to have him come up and close meeting, um, maybe for the first time. I don't know. That's, that's never happened. So, so we need public comment. Oh uh, yeah, no. So we're gonna have him come up. We're gonna have. We're gonna force him. Yeah. 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 I just didn't want to do it, that's right. Yeah, it's I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> okay. Any written communications or public writings distributed? I'm sorry, report. I just have one, but I have a feeling that the council knows this, and it's entirely based upon living and breathing in San Marino today. Um, the school board did approve going out in March 2020 for a $200 million bond, construction bond, um, relating to a variety of projects uh, within our school district. City council calendar. Scheduling dates for future council meetings. No changes, Mr. Mayor. Public comment. Yeah, I have a couple of news items here which I want to comment on as to what they represent. Item number one was uh, 
news article concerning even Stanford and the whole thing that was there applies to Collis Huntington, one of the great robber barons that stole money from California for years. And I maintain that the Huntington Library continues to steal money from the city of San Marino. It's the biggest business in the city. They take money from every source. They increase their, car, their revenue every year, and they give nothing back to the city. They get free water. They get minimal uh, sanitation costs uh, for disposal of 750,000 people. And they take our water, as I said, and they uh, tear up our streets and our environment, and we get nothing but 150,000 a year, which I maintain that originated with 100,000 that I got from from them for complaining about their lack of, of contribution to the revenue of the city. So I come back again to you to ask for an environmental impact fee on those people and that uh, they may be required to contribute something to the city. What they give us $150,000, hardly the cost of one police officer with a little service and, and uh, overtime. And from there you're back to square one with nothing in return and they turn up our streets and our environment. And again, I say they give us nothing, and I think since they have a tax exemption, you should go for revenue from them from whatever source you can get, and I believe it's an individual attendees uh, environmental impact fee, and I've used that several times, and I raised it again tonight, and that just points out some of the, the crooked things that uh, Collis Huntington and the other four or three robber barons did to the state of California until the Governor of Hiram Johnson put a stop to a lot of it, but we still get robbed. You, you want to know a ripoff? Thirty-five bucks for a book on anybody named Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is this is historic, but but it, it, it provides a basis for what I wanted to comment on, and that is, I'd like to see the city go for getting some money out of those people. The second item I gave you was is on pensions. It's a general. Uh, comment uh, not specifically uh, regimented to the city of San Marino, but that CalPERS and CalSTRS obligation is terrific. It's going to increase. We're getting more revenue every year from uh, taxes, and our reserves are building. And I caution once again and against letting reserves build because sooner or later CalPERS and CalSTRS are going to come and take it, and they're going to get it legally to the to the uh, courts perhaps, and I still maintain we should spend our money on city uh, infrastructure and other things and get our benefits from that money. If they come after us, let's file Chapter 9 and wipe them out. On the other hand, uh, I also uh, I recall that you had a meeting with the city employees recently, and that's our biggest single cost. Uh, I've always shuddered when you have these things because I don't know what comes out of them and I haven't seen the results of what you gave them or anything more, but it also raises the point and that is you have to control personnel costs and I see us going more bureaucratic in the city and uh, with more automatic things happening in that area that are going to increase our costs and I think we should pay more uh, respect and, and uh, look at it more closely. Those are my comments. Thank you. Any more public comments? Yes. yes. Indulge my uh, long-windedness tonight. Um, I just wanted to offer my compliments to Mayor Tao. Um, I have come to a lot of these meetings and um, you are the first mayor for a day that I've seen who has stayed through the entire meeting so I compliment you on your diligence. Any more public comments? We invite you back for our, our budget meeting. <laughs> <laughs> meeting adjourned. Wednesday, December 11, 2019.